Poultry, Know What You're Eating by Aaron Johnson and Siobhan McGee. Poultry refers to all domesticated birds raised for their meat. Although most people are, are familiar with chicken and turkey, there are several other kinds, which are duck, geese, guinea fowl, and pigeons, also known as squabs. Let's talk about chicken, the most popular poultry consumed. Ready to eat poultry is classified by age and sex. Broilers and fryers are among the youngest chickens purchased for consumption. They have soft skin, tender meat, and a flexible breastbone. Roasters, which are a little bit older than broilers and fryers, have a less flexible breastbone because it has calcified with age. Another classification of chicken is the Cornish game hen. It's the youngest chicken purchased for consumption and always has very tender meat. So over at the top we have the capons. The tenderness and juiciness of the meat is comparable to that of broilers and fryers. Mature chickens, their meat is usually tougher and coarser and the breastbone is less flexible. They are best used in stews, soups, and other slow cooking dishes. Turkeys are classified as fryer roasters, hens, or toms. Fryer roasters are the youngest and are sold at a ready to cook weight of about 7 pounds, although they are not often found in the grocery store. Hens and toms are usually the style of turkeys that we see around Thanksgiving time. Poultry is inspected for wholesomeness before and after slaughter by the USDA inspector. Once it passes inspection, it is stamped with the USDA inspection mark and then sent off to be sold in grocery stores. The grading of poultry is voluntary and is paid for by the producer. The criteria used includes the confirmation, the fleshing, the amount and distribution of fat, and freedom from blemishes such as skin discoloration or broken bones. The grades you can receive are A, B, or C. A being the best, C being the worst. Here are some pictures that gives examples. Poultry arrives at a market in many different types and styles. The different types are fresh, frozen, cooked, sliced, canned, and dehydrated. The different styles are alive, dressed, ready to cook, and convenience. A dressed bird has the blood, feathers, and the crawl removed. A ready to cook bird is eviscerated and free of blood, feathers, the head, and the feet. A bird of convenience is just cut up into pieces, for example, legs or drumsticks, breasts, thighs, wings. Processed poultry is also popular among consumers and food manufacturers. It is commonly used in canned or dried soups, frozen dinners, pot pies, sausages, hot dogs, hamburgers, and bologna. A popular example would be chicken nuggets, which are either whole or composed of a paste of a finely minced combination of chicken, meat, and skin. Although the USDA does not allow the use of hormones when raising chickens, they do allow antibiotics to prevent disease and increase feed efficiency. Additives might also be used in processed chicken, but it must be labeled and regulated by the USDA. Raw poultry should not be washed prior to preparation because this increases the danger of cross-contamination. About one-fourth of all chickens in the U.S. carry salmonella and about half carry campylobacter jejuni. Now we're going to be learning about the changes during preparation. And this should be a very interesting slide because not only is the chicken properly cooked in this slide, but it also looks delicious. Properly prepared poultry? is tender juicy and that's how it should be um, anything overcooked 
will be dry, tough, and stringy. And I don't think anyone loves dry, tough, stringy chicken. Another change that isn't listed on the slide is the internal temperature of poultry. The internal temperature of all poultry should be a minimum of 165 degrees for a minimum of 15 seconds. And the best way to check the internal temperature is to use a meat thermometer. You take the meat thermometer, you stick it into the thickest part of the breast, or you can insert it into the inner thigh, and the temperature has to reach a minimum of 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, I've also seen in the stores around Thanksgiving time turkeys that have the pop up indicators. Well, these indicators aren't always reliable, so the best way, again, is to use a meat thermometer. All right, now we're moving on to color change. The skin of the poultry should be a golden brown color, and once it reaches this color, you should uh, check for doneness in your poultry. The juice from the chicken sh should be a clear color, not a pink cloudy color. Because if it's pink and cloudy, that means that the chicken is not done cooking yet and you run the risk of catching a foodborne illness like salmonella. So in this picture that we have up here, the liquid, it is brown, but uh, that's because of the fat in the seasonings. Uh, but if you look closer, there are uh, there is clearness in it as well. Now moving on to touch. You should take your two fingers and touch the breast, and the breast will feel firm. It shouldn't feel soft or mushy. And in this case, uh, if it's soft or mushy, you should leave it in the oven and uh, continuously check it. Another way you can touch to see if your chicken is done is by taking the drumsticks of the chicken or the turkey and wiggle it in the joint, and it should be able to move freely within that joint. And if you can do that, then that is another indicator that the poultry is done. When it comes to dry heat preparation, there are three we're going to talk about. Let's start with roasting and baking. Before you roast your poultry, you want to make sure that the inner cavity is seasoned well. That's because in the oven, the steam is going to cause the seasoning and the aromas to permeate through the skin and the meat as well. Make sure during cooking that you're basting the poultry every 20 minutes. This will cause the skin and the meat to be moist throughout the cooking period. Broiling and grilling methods are uh, when you're cooking your poultry, these methods, they are usually, or all the time, well, most of the time they're individual pieces and they are marinated before they're cooking. And if you're going to use the marinade, make sure that the marinade is fully cooked uh, along with the chicken. Frying is one of my favorite methods to cook with and that is because when you bread the chicken and you, you stick it in the fryer that that breading will actually close in the juices and the moistness of that chicken and it makes it taste heavenly. These are the four moist heat preparation methods. And let's start with braising. This method is ideal for older, mature birds whose meat is really tough. The slow heat tenderizes the meat and makes it easier to chew. You can sear poultry before you bake it, and you do this by either searing it in a little bit of oil, a small amount of oil, or you can bread the poultry first and uh, put it in a pan and let it simmer with the lid on until it's done. Now we all know that stewing and braising are two similar uh, cooking methods. But with stewing, all you can do is, I think it's kind of easier than braising, and you can take the either whole cuts of meat or the pieces of meat and place them in uh, cold water in a pan and bring that pan to a boil and then once it become once the pan comes to a boil you reduce the heat down to a simmer and cover the pan with the lid on 
And stilling is also great for those tough, mature, meaty birds. Poaching is also a very easy task when it comes to chicken. When you poach chicken, you bring one and one third cup of liquid to a boil and you place the chicken in the liquid and once it since it's at a boil already you uh, reduce it and you let it simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes now I would never recommend anyone to even try to cook poultry in a microwave but I will say this once you you can thaw your poultry in a microwave and uh, once you thaw it in the microwave you immediately have to uh, cook it uh, whether it be a dry heat method or a moist heat method but it, it immediately has to be cooked the reason why this I would never recommend the microwaving method is because when the microwave hits the meat it will only cook the meat in certain spots and leave certain spots uncooked and then you're on the risk of again catching sal salmonella we're on to the storage of poultry all poultry should be properly stored or sealed in a refrigerator that is 40 degrees or below and you can store poultry for up to three days also an, another interesting fact is that frozen poultry can be stored from 6 to 12 months so that basically means that that Thanksgiving turkey that you had last year is still good although I would, wouldn't recommend you eat it also when you place poultry in the fridge you want to make sure that it's on the bottom the very bottom shelf of the refrigerator and this will prevent the drippings or that may be that may come from the poultry from falling onto anything that you might eat. 